Tonight, 12 News investigates three months after the TPC explosions. We're asking questions about the safety of kids. You know, there are a lot of schools that are close to our plants, and we wanted to know whether there are any regulations that industries have to follow if they're close to communities, especially close to schools. Kelsey Johnson investigates what's being done to keep our kids in the classroom safe. It was just before 1 a.m. What is the emergency? I don't know. It sounded like a bomb went off. Something hit my house. When houses across Mid County shook. It's been an explosion and my window has been blown in. Blurry eyed residents rocked from their beds by several explosions and a huge fireball in the sky. The TPC plant explosion sent fear down the spines of residents across Mid County. Okay, just stay in your house, okay? I'm scared to death that thing's gonna explode one more time. Luckily, kids in Port Natchez were out of school for Thanksgiving break, but if it would have happened on a normal school week, 12 hours earlier, things would have been different. If it had happened then, I don't even wanna think about what might have happened. Mike Beatty's grandson is a student at Port Natchez Middle School. It's one of three schools damaged after the blast set TPC. Those kids could have been in a real bind. Windows blown out, doors knocked off their hinges. Beatty says these images are a reminder of just how close we live, work, and learn near refineries across southeast Texas. The plants are the lifeblood of this place. If they go away, the town goes away. According to the Center for Effective Government Kids in Danger Zones report, one in three students in the U.S. are at risk from a chemical catastrophe. And Southeast Texas is one of the most high-risk metro areas in the country with what they call multi-vulnerability zones. In Texas, Jefferson County is one of the top five counties with kids most at risk. The schools built up around the plant. None of them were there when they built that place. Just take a look at this map compiled by 12 News. It shows 15 schools within two miles of a plant or refinery. One of those schools is Lamar University. We're always monitoring uh, industry and we have a very good working relationship with all of the plant management in our area. Shelly Vitanza is the Director of Public Affairs for Lamar. She says there are specific guidelines the school follows to make sure it's 15,000 students and staff are safe in the event of a blast. Everything on campus is designed by um, licensed state licensed architects and engineers. So we take into um, account, you know, what the building's going to be used for and where it's located. A lot of research has been put into making schools near plants safer. They've researched everything from domes to barriers, but nothing has proved to be realistic. There is no such a thing as a blast proof structure. Sina Nejad is a structural engineer for Sigma Engineering. The company designs buildings and structures for industries, and it specializes in blast resistant design. There are no codes that I know of that dictates uh, a different type of construction because of the proximity to a industrial facility. The way you do this design is to uh, make sure that the structure would resist the load and, the, and takes that energy and dissipate it as quickly as possible. He says there are certain materials to use that will help lessen the blow. Structural steel, concrete, Kevlar, and carbon fiber, just to name a few. Readily available and is good enough to, to build resist, blast resistant buildings for the loads that some of these refineries have. The Kids in Danger Zones report says there are ways to make children safer without shutting down industry. They say the most effective way is to require companies to use safer chemical alternatives. It's something many plants are already doing. They also say facilities should reduce the amount of toxins stored on site. Kelsey Johnson, 12 News Investigates.